everybody. This is section 3-4 um, from our Math 211 Geometry textbook. And in this section, we're going to look at theorems about parallel and perpendicular lines. So just some adding in a lot of different theorems that we haven't seen so far for parallel and perpendicular lines. All right, our first theorem is the parallel postulate. And this postulate says, through a point not on a line, there is one and only one line parallel to the given line. And we um, mentioned this one earlier, so this is really a repeat. You probably already have it written down. Um, but again, it is important to know that when you have a parallel line and a point not on that line, you can draw lots of lines through that point that will intersect with the other line but only one will be parallel. So that, you know, I can draw lots of different lines through that point, but only one is gonna be parallel. And that one is right here. Okay, next we have a perpendicular postulate, which again is a repeat from before. Um, and it says, through a point not on a line, there is one and only one line perpendicular to the given line. So we got our line and we have the line going perpendicular through it. Our next theorem is our perpendicular transversal theorem, and it states that if you have a plane and you have two parallel lines in that plane, um, and they are cut by a transversal, if we know that transversal is perpendicular to one of the parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other parallel line. So, excuse me, it is perpendicular to both lines. So if it's perpendicular to one, it's perpendicular to the other, which makes sense. All right, our next theorem is are two lines parallel to the third line? And I think of this theorem kind of as your transitive property with parallel lines. Um, it says if two lines are parallel to the same line, then all three lines are parallel to each other. And if we look here, we have again that um, the transversal, transversal property here. So we know that A is parallel to B and B is parallel to C. Because A and C are both parallel to B, that means that A is parallel to C. So really, we're just using our transitive property here, but with parallel lines. All right, next, we are going to look at a proof. And this proof is where we are going to um, prove perpendicular lines using our proving our perpendicular transversal theorem. So um, when we start off again, when we do our proof, we're going to do our two column proof. So we're going to have our statements and our reasons. Oops. Okay. All right, sorry. My writing on the tablet is not fabulous. I promise I write better in real life. All right, um, so the first thing, again, when we write our proof, always start with our given. So we know that in a plane that L is parallel to M, um, and I'm gonna write that as my first given. And from that one, I just wanna see, you know, what information can I get from that? And if I know that L is parallel to M. If I'm just looking at that given, um, they've also marked on here angles one and two. They didn't tell us anything about them, but I do know because my lines are parallel that angle one is congruent to angle two. And this is through our corresponding angles theorem. Um, and it's the converse. So it's the corresponding angles theorem converse. Um, because I know if I have parallel lines and angles one and two are marked and they're in the same position, they're corresponding angles, so they are congruent. Uh, and right now, I think that's all I can get from my lines being parallel. So I'm going to go to my second given 
I'm going to add it on here, and I'm going to say, well, I know T is perpendicular to L, and that is my other given. And um, so then if we have perpendicular lines, then I know, um, so T is perpendicular to L. So that means that angle one is a right angle. So I'm gonna say that angle one is a right angle. Um, and I know that it is a right angle because of my definition of perpendicular lines. So I'm going to put that in there. And you can abbreviate with the symbol for perpendicular. Now, um, let's see, we're proving that T is perpendicular to M. So we also, we can't use our perpendicular transversal theorem because that's what we're trying to prove. But I do know that angle one is congruent to angle two, and angle one is a right angle. So because angle one is congruent to angle two, then I also know that um, angle two is a right angle. And that is going to be really our definition of right angles because I know they're already congruent. I know one is a right angle because of perpendicular lines. So we're going to say definition of right angles. And then if we know that angle two forms a right angle there, then I do know that angle or T is perpendicular to M. And again, this one is going to go back to our definition of perpendicular lines. As it says, if you have a right angle, if two lines form to meet a right angle, the lines are perpendicular. I mean, if you have perpendicular lines, your angles are right. You, um, the angles formed are right angles, so you can look at the theorem or the definition and the converse of it to get both of those, and that will be our proof. Okay, here is another theorem. Um, and this one, again, it kind of, we already know this information, but it's just giving us a little bit, you know, it's putting it, formally defining it. Um, if two lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form four right angles. So here I know that L is perpendicular to M. So that means that um, all four angles formed when L meets M are going to be four 90 degree or right angles. All right, our next theorem is about perpendicular lines, and this theorem says if two lines intersect to form a linear pair of congruent angles, then the lines are perpendicular to each other. So again, if we have a linear pair and two angles, a linear pair with two congruent angles, then those angles are perpendicular, or those lines are perpendicular to each other, because we talked before about how the linear pair, if you had two congruent angles, would have to be 90 degrees. Um, and because they're 90 degrees, then we know the lines have to be perpendicular to each other. All right, and the last thing that we're going to do for this slide is find the value of x. Um, now, they only ask for the value of x. However, we could find y if we wanted to. Um, we do know because um, that, let's see here, because one is a 90 degree angle, then that means that this angle right here is also going to be a 90 degree angle. So if the, the these two angles are complementary, so x and 63, um, so I do know that 63 and x have to add to 90. So to find x, I can do 90 
minus 63. We'll make that 10. We'll make that 8. And 10 minus 3 is 7. 8 minus 6 is 2. So x is 27 degrees. If we wanted to find y, we could do the same thing. We know that these two angles are going to be complementary, add up to 90. So again, even though they didn't ask it, we'll find it. We'll do 90 minus 49. Make that 10, make that 8. Um, 10 minus 9 is 1, and you get 4. So y would be 41 degrees. All right, that's it for 3-4. I will be posting some problems in Blackboard for you guys to try for part of your graded assignment for this week. Have a great day. Bye.